Using SEMrush Domain Analytics, you'll be able to see quickly and easily what's going on with a given domain, whether it's your domain or a competitor's domain, on the you know, search marketing side of things, we'll say. Now, if you don't already have an account to SEMrush, I'll leave a link down below where you can get signed up for a free trial and test all these features out. But once you have an account set up, you can come over to the SEO tab here. There's a whole bunch of tabs down below but if you expand this one and come to domain overview which is what it's now called it used to be called domain analytics but they changed the name of this feature and from there you can start typing in you know a competitor website uh, domain name your domain name whichever one you you know whatever you're trying to look at essentially and then click search from there we're gonna have a domain overview page and this is going to give us all sorts of different insights into what this company is doing or what this what is going on with this domain specifically in terms of search marketing. Now, there's a bunch of different data. We won't go into you know any of these other tools or anything, but we can take a quick look at what's going on on this main page here. There's an authority score. So Best Buy is a pretty big company, obviously. So their domain score is 92. And if uh, if it's a hundred, that's the that's the most authoritative you know website that can <laughs> that can possibly be. One, it's a scale from one to one hundred. So the lower it is, the closer to one that it is, the the less authority the website has. And this is really determined in part by the number of backlinks that a website has. And so that's this number over here. And it's not just the number of backlinks, but also the number of referring domains, the quality of those backlinks. So the authority score of the websites that are ranking or linking back to VestBuy.com. And this first panel here really just gives us a quick overview of things. So if you're checking like four or five different competitors, you can put them all into SEMrush and just take a look at how much organic traffic they're getting on a monthly basis how much paid traffic they're getting from search. So this is like Google ads, essentially, how many backlinks they have. And then underneath each of these numbers, there's some additional numbers. So uh, the SEMrush domain rank, which is a part of the authority score. And it says it's been going down. It's dropped by two points recently, which is interesting. Uh, and then the number of keywords that they're ranked for, so 12.4 million and the number of keywords that they're running ads on Google for, which is almost 14,000, and the number of referring domains, which is 148,000. Of course, anything that is in light blue here where you hover over and that it underlines it, that means you can click on that to see more in-depth information about what's going on. And then right below this, it's kind of hidden, but you'll see page pages per visit, average visit duration, bounce rate, we can click show all here, which is going to give us um, more of the traffic analytics, right? So that's the analytics of all of the traffic that's coming to this website. And that information could be helpful as well to see, you know, like how many visitors are coming, how long they're staying on the website, or how many pages they're visiting on the website. So on average, some people will come to Best Buy and click on five pages. Some will click on only one page. So it's averaging about 3.26 pages per visit, which just means that's the number of pages people visit when they go to the website. And this tells us how long people are staying on the website. And the, the, the reason this is important is because if you're trying to compete with Best Buy and you only have a pages per visit of one or two and average time on site is three or four minutes, and your bounce rate is like 80%, which is not good, <laughs> then it's going to be a lot more difficult to outrank this company because Google is looking at the user experience when it's determining who should show up at the very top of the search results. So, for you know, if you're, if you're thinking about it from Google's perspective, if somebody goes to Best Buy and they spend 10 minutes on there, they click a bunch of different pages, which the bounce rate is how many people interact with the website before going and clicking the back button to look at other pages on the Google search results page. So these these are user experience indicators and Google can 
use these to help determine if people are finding what they're looking for and having a good experience with the website. And if they are, then it's going to try to put that website up higher in the organic search results, right? So that's a little bit of a tangent, but um, now another thing to mention is that you can choose what information you're looking at here. So maybe you're in the UK and you wanna just assess what's happening in the UK. You can click through to these different geographic areas. You can also check mobile versus desktop and change the date range. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can you can change to to uh, refine down and and find information that you're looking for. You can also export this as a PDF if you want to just scan a whole bunch of websites, export it, and have that for reference in the future. Super helpful, right? And again, there's a lot of toggles here, so you can toggle from paid to organic, like from organic to paid, and vice versa. If you want to see how much traffic they're getting from ads versus from organic, uh, but there is a breakdown here. So the the blue line is organic, and the yellow line or orange line is paid traffic. So we can see it's been pretty consistent that they've been well. They they get a lot more traffic around the holidays. Makes total sense, right? Lots of people buy this buy from Best Buy as gifts or buy Best Buy gift cards for their kids or grandkids or whatever. And then it kind of drops off going into the summer months, spikes a little bit, maybe around uh, back to school time, and then levels off again here. Now, with just looking at the Best Buy website, you would never be able to find any of this information. <laughs> so having a tool like SEMrush where you can dive into the analytics of a specific website or domain however you want to call it uh, can be vital for understanding if there are gaps where you can come in and gain a strategic advantage or maybe you want to go in a completely different direction and not compete with a specific website right but you don't really know that until you start looking at uh, all the analytics you know, maybe you find that there's a huge opportunity to um, outrank them in in Canada, you know, like in a different area, they're kind of dropping the ball and you could come in and drastically improve upon what they're already doing. Um, we also have their keyword breakdown here. So from the Best Buy domain name or website in general, it looks like over the last several months, the number of keywords that they're ranking for has been steadily increasing. And this is broken down so we can see how many keywords they're ranking for in the top three spots versus the top four to 10 spots versus the top 11 to 20 spots, so on and so on. And again, it looks like it ramps up going into the holidays. And then after the holidays, it sort of drops back off again. The other cool thing here is they're going to show us where Google has provided information about updates to their algorithm. So you may see a dramatic change in the keywords that they're ranking for, and it may be correlated with a change in Google's algorithm. And some of these are known changes. Some of these are, are changes that SEMrush thinks happen, but Google never officially announced. Um, but, you know, these ones here in where it shows the Google sign, these are Google released updates where Google has confirmed that an update was released. And, you know, you can see here it, may take up to two weeks to complete. You can go learn more information about what this update was all about. So if you're looking at your own website and you see that you're ranking great and then all of a sudden it drops off or everything was pretty level and then all of a sudden it takes off and you start ranking for a lot more terms right around when there was a Google confirmed update, then you can dig into that and see how that actually impacted your rankings on Google. SERP features. So there's a lot of different ways now and seemingly more all the time. <laughs> a lot of ways you can show up on the Google search results page. There are like featured snippets, which is, you know, the, the box at the very top of Google where it features a website and some information about things. Um, websites can have site links on them. There's FAQ sections. Uh, they, they actually seem to have a lot of reviews. So or are showing up in the search results with reviews a lot of the time and in the images, which makes sense because they sell a lot of tech products where the image 
is how you determine if it's a cool product or not or if it's something you're interested in. And so we can analyze the breakdown of where they're, what type of um, feature they're showing up on on Google's search results page, right? So some videos, uh, a little bit in the local pack for their local stores and, and whatnot. Uh, so you can click through here to see a full report. You can also quickly see some organic keywords that are some of the highest volume keywords that they're ranking for, meaning it's just, you know, these terms, mostly their business name, obviously. Uh, we could also see the search intent. So this is a very commercial intent. If somebody's searching for Best Buy, it means they're probably going to buy something, right? Again, you can see these full reports dig into things in more depth. We can also see a distribution of where they rank on Google. This is pretty normal. Usually it's going to be the lowest portion is in position one to three, although that's the most valuable. And then it's more of, there are more pages that rank on Google in position four to 10 until you get to position 50 to 100, which is the most, about 30% for them. And we were talking about this briefly up here about search intent. You know, when you're marketing on Google and other search engines, you want to make sure that you're providing the right type of content for the intent of a search. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to tell what the intent is behind a search. But that's what's so powerful about SEMrush is it just tells you, right? Like, if you're not sure whether when somebody is searching for your competitor or not, if it's a commercial search or an informational search, you can just put the information into SEMrush, put their domain in here, and you'll be able to tell exactly what the intent is behind somebody searching for keywords that they're ranking for. And there's a breakdown so we can see they actually rank for a lot of informational intent searches, which just means, you know, they might have like blog posts and different content where somebody's looking for more information about the iPhone or uh, laptops or TVs or any number of things and they have most likely created content that will provide that information and then get people to think about utilizing them as a source for whatever products they need right <laughs> and then they can run remarketing ads all sorts of different stuff navigational so that navigational is going to be more like best buy near me you know, that's somebody that's trying to get somewhere, figure something out. Uh, commercial is going to be somebody who wants to make a purchase. Or I should say, uh, <laughs> there's going to be a money exchange involved. Um, and, and sometimes it's them looking for a business, which is why we see Best Buy as commercial up here. But it's also navigational because somebody might be trying to get to Best Buy, right? And then transactional is essentially like making a purchase. They also have um, a breakdown of their branded traffic, which is this stuff up here where somebody's searching for their business name or their business name with another keyword like near me. So again, that's navigational as we were talking about down here, but it's also branded. And we can see the breakdown of branded versus non-branded as well, which we can view more details on that. This is also really helpful to see the main organic competitors. And you don't necessarily have to dig into the data at all. You can just look at this quick overview, see that they're competing a lot against a lot of different companies. But Newegg and PC Mag and CNET, Target, these are all companies that also sell some of the same stuff that Best Buy sells. And they're ranking on, on Google and other search engines for a number of the same terms. Now that's that's helpful and to see kind of like how many keywords and stuff they have going on is good but it's a little bit tough to like visualize how that's going so this is a breakdown where we can see that target has a lot of organic keywords that they rank for and they have a lot of search traffic but it may not be as similar right some people go to target to buy food but you're almost never going to go to Best Buy to purchase food. <laughs> Maybe, but <laughs> it's just going to be snack food, if, if anything. Uh, so there's not a ton of op overlap, which you can see on the bottom number. It says common keywords. That was almost 700,000. Whereas something like CNET, 
doesn't have as much organic search traffic or as many keywords that they're ranking for, but it's pretty similar comparatively because it's tech stuff. Same with PC Mag, Newegg, etc. And then this is where we get into the paid advertising portion of things. And they are paying to show up on Google Ads for their business name or people looking for Best Buy Near Me, which is really good to know. And of course, we can exp you know, expand the view on this and get into all the details of everything that's going on here, which is probably a little much for this video. Uh, and then there's the paid traffic distribution. So they're predominantly showing up in position number one with their Google Ads which is the opposite of what you see in the organic search results. <laughs> Probably just because they, they're spending a lot of money on the paid traffic. We can also see their main competitors for paid search and the positioning. So this is very similar to what we were just looking at. And then some samples of the ads that they're running on Google Ads. So you could see a whole bunch of these, but initially here, these are probably the ads that they're running for the keywords where people are searching for Best Buy and then they just show up at the very top. And we can also see some backlink data, seeing some of their top backlinks here where they're getting referrals from, etc. See how many do follow and no follow links they have, the types of backlinks, so mostly text, a few images, but that looks pretty standard. Um, and then even look at their anchor text, which makes sense. They have a lot of pe people linking to their website using the word Best Buy or the phrase Best Buy. You can see that some of their top referring domains and some index pages here, which, of course, we could export all of these and look at all of the pages that have been indexed. But that's sort of how the um, domain analytics, which is now called Domain Overview, is used to be able to analyze what is going on with a website rather whether it's your website or a competitor's website it's just going to give you an in-depth look at all sorts of different information regarding their performance on search engines like google that you can then dig into figure out what's going on and use that to your advantage in your marketing so i hope you found this helpful if there's anything you did have questions about don't hesitate to reach out and just drop your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to them there. If you're like most new business owners, you're probably struggling to get your online presence established, let alone get it to the point where it's bringing you a consistent flow of customers, right? <laughs> so that's why I created this free course where I actually walk you step-by-step -step through the whole process of setting up your online presence. This is the same process we've been using for our clients for over a decade and one of my agencies. And essentially, I'm going to show you how to set up an SEO-friendly business name right from the get-go, how to develop your website really quickly and easily, how to set up your Google Maps listing, start getting some Google reviews, everything you need in order to have a substantial online presence where people can actually start finding you and, and purchasing your products or services. <laughs> Best part is, I'm going to show you how to do it in under a couple of hours and all for less than 50 bucks. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up today. Make sure to check this course out for free right now because I'm probably going to start charging for this at some point in the future. All right, I'll see you on the other side.